and not plank either, by the way. That, stop fucking doing that exercise, honestly. Like, it's a waste of time, all right? What up guys, the Fighting Therapist here, and for today's video, I got you part two from the other ad video. If you missed that one, you guys can click right here. And this is gonna be all about core and core stability when it comes to your abs and core. Remember, they're two different ones. If you watched the last video, you should go watch it before you, you know, do this one. Now, if you haven't yet, please subscribe, hit that notification bell, and give this video a like. I'm trying to do as much as I can to give and provide you guys with information, helpful information. So give that video a like. The more likes I get, the more people get to see this video and the more that YouTube kind of, you know, does its thing. So let's jump into it right now. So for exercising, when we're talking about the core, all right, so when we're talking about the core, it's not really an exercise that's gonna cause you to crunch, right? Or, or do twists or do anything like that. When we talk about core, we talk about having the ability to stiffen up our spine and the musculature around it while giving it a stiffness and stability to allow us to do an exercise. Think about squat, deadlift, all these compound movements, overhead press. Your spine isn't moving. We're not flexing, we're not lateral rotating, we're not doing anything. We're keeping it stiff and stable while performing an exercise. So of course, none of the crunches, twists, leg raise, none of that is gonna work on core. What is gonna work on core, and not plank either, by the way, that, stop fucking doing that exercise, honestly, like, it's a waste of time, all right? I did my athletic therapy degree. We learned about something called the McGill Big Three, which is pretty much three specific core exercises that should be implemented in your everyday life and also into a workout routine. If you guys look at the strongest man in the world, He's pretty much doing these three exercises. So the strongest man in the world is doing these exercises to squat the most. Shouldn't you be doing them to get stronger core? Like, does that make sense, right? Yeah, okay, let's go. First exercise is going to be, pay attention here, okay? All exercises are to not allow any movement in the spine, yes, yet to hold it, right? So the first one, which I'm gonna link right here and I'm gonna show you guys why it's so important, is gonna be the Berg Dog. The Berg Dog is pretty much you being able to control that spine, so we're in quadruped position. We're not, we don't have an anterior tilt, right? See my back here, we don't have a posterior tilt here. We're not in My breath in, I'm contracting my core nice and stiff, and I need the ability to move my joints in a plane in motion and hold them. Having that stability, I'm not falling in internal rotation, I'm not externally rotating, I'm not putting all my weight on one leg. I'm right here, my foot is not pointed, it's down, my hand is up, and I'm maintaining this position, and I'm holding it, staying tight. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. When I'm coming back, a lot of people do this, that does not happen when you're squatting or doing an overhead squat or doing any overhead press movements, right? If we think about this, what is this? It's an overhead press position, right? Even if I just move my leg, this is what squats are doing. My spine shouldn't be moving in flexion and extension. So if I come back from this position, I can just tap, keep that core nice and tight, not bending, tap and come back. So. Working on the progression for these exercises, you're going to want to do some isometric holding, right? Because what are compound lifts? They're isometric holds of your core while your limbs are doing movement. So we're creating stability within that great area where there's a lot of transfer of energy and we're keeping that core nice and stiff, our spine stiff, everything is nice and stable. So that's going to be the first exercise. Next one, it's going to be down here. That exercise was for the posterior stability in the back. Now we're gonna to wanna to work that anterior stability in the front. So, we're gonna come down, okay? Keep one knee bent, one knee straight. To make it easier, after you guys can focus here, your low back, okay? You're gonna put your hands behind your back. This is just to give you some biofeedback of what you're doing. After when you feel that you can actually control that, you guys can take your hands and put them on the side. We're gonna put our hands behind our back. Head's gonna be on the floor, okay? We're gonna put our shoulders nice and down. 
We're gonna flatten it just a little bit. We don't want to do a posterior chain again. We want neutral and neutral is a light lordotic curve, not insanely amount and not completely flat. So we want a normal curvature in the lumbar spine. So we're gonna contract our core. We're here holding it. Okay, we're contracting nice and tight. So I feel that little bit of pressure on my hand and I'm gonna lightly lift my head off the floor. I'm not coming completely up, right? A lot of people do their lifts like this. I'm slightly coming up and holding, squeezing the core nice and tight. 10 seconds, five, four, three, one, break. Being able to breathe in these positions is gonna allow you to take this exercise and adapt it into your compound movements. Being able to breathe and cause stiffness and holding is what we want when we're doing our lifts, when we're doing movement. We don't just hold our breath, right? That's, that's completely different if we're talking about the Vasava maneuver to just do that one heavy rep. But to create that stability, we need to be able to do that stiffness and be able to breathe at the same time. Once the hands behind the back become too easy, you can take your hands off, put them on the side, or you can lift them up because a lot of times when your hands are down, you're pressing down on the floor to hold that contraction. So taking the arms off is gonna really put a lot of tension here. The progression for these exercises are holds in a matter of either a drop set or set. So you can start with two sets of six seconds, two sets of eight seconds, two sets of 10 seconds, then progress that to three of six, three of eight, three of 10, or you guys can do a drop set of three sets of 10 seconds, two sets of eight seconds, one sets of 10 seconds. You really can play around with these exercises. So when it comes to the sets, you guys can really play along with it and that would be the recommendation. But now for the last exercise, we hit the front, we hit the back, now we gotta hit the side. Do you know, before I do, do you know what the exercise is? I feel like you guys know exactly what the exercise is. Side plank. Now, it's, it's too easy of an exercise when you come to the front plank. Again, not for everybody, but there's a lot of better exercises you guys can be doing besides the plank, and this is why I'm mentioning it. Side plank is completely different, and it's a great exercise to target the lateral chain. First one is gonna simply be on your knees. So we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we're nice and straight so our knees aren't out in front of us. We have a nice straight line, so we're getting a little bit of hip extension. Hands are gonna be on the hips, so we're gonna be able to control whether we're rotating. Shoulders gonna be stacked on top of the electronaut, top of the elbow bone, and we're just gonna come up, just holding this. Again, for a lot of people, this might be very challenging. So just being able to hold this, contract, staying tight for 10 seconds, being able to breathe while still contracting and holding. Trust me, it's a hard exercise when the focus is on contraction. If this is too easy, we're gonna separate the legs, the bottom leg out in front, the back leg out the other way, and we're just gonna come up and hold. Same thing, you can switch it up too, right? Now, the bottom leg is working the abductor, right? If I switch my legs around, the adductor on the leg that's on top is going to be working even more in an isometric form. So we switch legs. From here, now, this one's working a bit more, but still the lateral chain. We want to make it even harder, we're going to stack the feet together. We're going to come up. Last one, to make it even more challenging, we're going to lift the leg up. Now, depending on where you are on that exercise, make the main focus the lat. If you find that you're losing your mind-muscle con connection or you find your you're breaking that flexion extension on the spine, not being able to hold it stiff because of all these other variants that you're putting into the exercise. Stop it, regress, go to a position that you can get that connection and that hold. Another exercise that isn't a part of the big three, but it plays and makes a lot of sense when it comes to core stability and let's say a pressing motion would be ball rollouts or rotation on a Swiss ball. I'm causing stability within my spine, my lumbar spine, my core, while I'm moving the extremities. Whether it be forward and back, whether it be in a pot stirring motion, these are great exercises to incorporate when it comes to core stability. I hope you guys had a lot to take away from this video and these two part series. Very simple, very easy, great way to add these exercises in, especially now. If you're doing an ab routine, and all you're noticing, you're doing a lot of crunching and not enough iso holds. Take back from all the rectus work and that ab popping work. 
put more emphasis on core stability and holds and get better at being able to hold that hold those moves for longer periods of time since if you're talking about a heavy five by five you're talking about some reps that you're gonna be under tension for about 30 seconds. You're getting up and you're stuck on that bar. If we start getting flexion extension, we're putting a lot of tension and shearing force somewhere along our spine, somewhere down in our hip that we don't want. And throughout time and poor form, we're gonna cause injury later. And it's not gonna be now, it's gonna be later or it might even be now depending on the load and depend how many times that you've caused injury to yourself through just improper form. So. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, it's your boy. That's it, Zach. Punch, headbutt, elbow, knee. Peace.